Hello, and welcome to Module 2 in our summer session on cognition. Uh, we're going to start talking about sensation and perception in particular today. In Lecture 2.1, we'll be talking about uh, just doing a basic introduction to uh, some of the questions in perception and talking about uh, Gestalt organizing principles. We'll start with uh, some questions to consider, uh, talk about an introduction to perception, and then look at the Gestalt approach and the Gestalt principles of organization. Um, basic quick introduction to some of the classic areas in perception. So some questions we're going to consider um, throughout our discussion of perception is why is it that two different people experience different perceptions in response to the same stimulus? Um, some of us can see some things one way, some of us will see them another. We'll talk about how this occurs with things called bidirectional images uh, in which you might see one thing and I might see another. Another important question is how does perception depend on a person's knowledge about characteristics of the environment? And what we'll see through this is that our knowledge is as important for our perception as is what we see and hear in the environment. Uh, and we'll talk a great deal about what we call top-down processing and its importance in this particular area. Another important question is how the brain becomes tuned to respond to things likely to appear in the environment. And why is that so? So we'll talk about why motion automatically captures our attention, um, why some things are easier to see than others, and why um, we seem to be tuned to respond best to certain stimuli. So there's a reason why people always, often, not always, often see faces in cheese, bread, mold. People are always seeing Jesus or the um, Virgin Mary uh, in various and sundry things like toast. Uh, and that's because our brains are really hardwired to see faces. And so we see faces in a lot of places. And then finally, uh, one of the other questions to think about is how are perception and memory represented in the brain and how are those two things tied in with one another? Well, let's start with some basic introduction. So perception is our experience resulting from the stimulation of our senses. So sensation is generally what we refer to as activation of our sensory um, systems. So light striking the back of the retina, um, sound waves striking your tympanic membrane causing um, sound to be generated in the cochlea, or, sorry, the perception of sound to be generated in the cochlea, uh, etc. Perception is our experience of that, so how we interpret that information. So some basic concepts, the first thing to understand is that perceptions can change based on added information. Uh, it involves a process similar to reasoning or problem solving. That is, this is kind of an iterative process. Um, we use our knowledge and our expectations to make inferences about um, what's happening around us. And oftentimes we fill in things correctly and incorrectly. Uh, particularly we do this often with language. Um, we will oftentimes mishear something because of what we were expecting. Uh, instead of hearing what was actually said. So listening is a particularly difficult skill because of that. Uh, remember, our perceptions occur in conjunction with other actions, so perceptions don't generally occur uh, completely independently. Um, and that's an important thing to consider because oftentimes that information that uh, occurs with other actions can inform uh, what we're seeing and what we're perceiving. There are different theories uh, regarding perception. Uh, the direct perception theories uh, primarily rely on what we call bottom-up processing. That is, perception is primarily driven by uh, the data in front of us, that is the uh, information striking our, our sensory organs. Uh, so perception comes from stimuli in the environment, and parts uh, are identified and put together, and then recognition occurs. So we'll talk about how one of the ways in which we actually perceive the environment is by taking pieces of information and putting them together and forming a perception based on that. Constructive perception theories are also an important part uh, of understanding perception. And this includes what we call top-down processing. And top-down processing occurs because we actively construct perceptions using information based on our expectations. And it turns out, really, a holistic theory 
of perception requires both bottom-up processing and top-down processing. And we'll take a look at that as we move through our discussions of this uh, area in this area by looking at instances which demonstrate clearly uh, the influence of our knowledge on our perceptual processes. So we're going to start um, by talking about the Gestalt approach to perception. The Gestalt psychologists, as you remember from our uh, Foundations lecture, uh, were very interested in a number of questions. And Gestalt does not have a good English translation. Um, oftentimes people translate it into uh, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. Really, oftentimes we talk about how a whole perception becomes something different or is other than just simply adding together um, its parts. So you get something entirely new. And we'll see that in some of these Gestalt phenomena. So the Gestalt psychologists were interested in a number of uh, approaches. They were of some of the earliest people to talk about this question of what we call figure versus ground. One of the things we've already started to talk about is how when we perceive something, it is in a context. And so what we see oftentimes has to do with we're focusing on what's in front of us or what's behind us, or what's in front of what we're seeing or what we're seeing versus what's behind it. And we call that figure versus ground. The classic example of figure versus ground is the Rubin vase. So if you focus on the figure in this case, which is the white areas, you see a vase. But if you focus on the ground, that is the background, you can actually see two faces facing each other. And your perception can flip back and forth from the vase to the faces, but it's very difficult to see them both at the same time. Um, and so we kind of have to flip back and forth as to what we're focusing on. So it's a pretty simple um, demonstration of this question of figure versus ground. There are five different Gestalt principles of organization that we'll take uh, one at a time. Uh, these are well named, so they're um, relatively straightforward to understand. Proximity, similarity, continuity, connectedness, prognots, which is simplicity or good figure. Um, so we'll start with proximity. We perceive things as being um, connected because they are close to one another. So while technically there are six lines here, we could see three roads or three groups um, or three objects because of the way these things are grouped together. And it simply has to do with proximity. Similarity, we group things based on how similar they are. So while there are 12 individual objects here, we tend to see um, four columns of two different kinds of objects rather than three rows. And it's simply because they're similar to one another. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, Similarly here, um, similar things appear to be grouped together. If you look at this pattern of dots, we see this has sort of a um, rows and vertical columns, whereas here this looks like clearly um, vertical columns and not rows. Um, another um, example of uh, similarity has to do with looking at color. So as you can see, it almost looks like this woman is transparent um, right here because her dress is matching the color of the foam in the sea. And so this is a further example of this idea of uh, the Gestalt principles of similarity. Continuity, we simply um, believe that objects are continuous. This isn't exactly my best artwork here. Um, but we generally see this as one sort of continuous waving object rather than a bunch of individual segments. A uh, much better example is uh, this rope. Uh, we perceive this as one single rope because of continuity rather than a bunch of individual segments. So we see that this rope continues on rather than, um, as you can see over here on the right, rather than thinking of it as a bunch of individual discrete objects. So lines tend to be seen as following the smoothest path. One of the biggest or easiest ways to think about uh, the Gestalt principles is they follow uh, Occam's razor. And that is the simplest explanation is preferred. And so our visual systems are essentially um, tuned to come up with the simplest explanation. Connectedness is our fourth uh, principle of uh, Gestalt organization. Uh, what we see here are what look like three objects, when in actuality this was created with three lines and six um, closed-in circles. Um, 
but they look like three objects to us because they're connected to one another. Prognats or simplicity or good figure. This is a little bit more complicated, but also uh, really the almost defining way to think about uh, what we mean by a gestalt. And so what you see here is a triangle that doesn't exist. So what's happening is our visual system is using the simplest explanation and creating a figure that technically doesn't exist, but that's what makes the most sense, that a figure would be overlapping the circles and the other triangle. When in actuality, what we have here is a, um, our partial triangles, well actually they're sort of greater than, less than signs, and what you might call Pac-Man um, figures. But that creates the illusion of an additional object. So we see an edge where one actually doesn't exist. Um, similarly, uh, we see uh, things as simple as possible. This is sort of an example of connectedness and prognosis at the same time. So we see uh, the Olympic rings as overlapping rings rather than a bunch of individual discrete shapes. Um, so let's take a look at this interesting gestalt illusion as we wrap up our discussion of um, gestalt psychology. Let me capture the main screen. So here you can see a um, pretty good uh, example of uh, how you can go back and forth with this illusion. Here we don't see any object, and now it looks like there is an actual object. Well, that is our um, introductory lecture on um, Gestalt phenomenon, and uh, I hope you found it interesting. And next time around, and lecture 2.2, .2, we will be talking about pattern recognition.